know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. Oh! What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. And of course, we got that new comic book day show for you. We are talking about all the releases that came out. We're recording this new comic book day night. This video hits the channel on Thursdays. So, of course, we're talking about those first appearances, the Reader Buzz books, the Variant Buzz books, and then Jack has a long-term play. Jack, how was your new comic book day? It's been busy. I wish it had a little bit more uh, new comics in it. Um, but again, I, this is my favorite part of it. We get to sit down, um, talk about all of these books uh, and talk about uh, what is going on in the market because this week is certainly a very active week on top of one of the most anticipated releases um, probably of the entire calendar year. We also got one of the kind of out of nowhere hot books uh, that we, you know, we haven't seen something like that in a little while. Yeah say hot book but some of them reader people we've been high on some of them books <laughs> either way let's get into it right now starting with those first appearances and kicking off the first appearances we get that justice league endless winner number one that gives us what first appearance of frost king yeah so this Justice League and Endless Winter book is interesting because it's it's one of the kind of themes of this week is while we're going to talk about um, one of those most anticipated books, like I said, of 2020, maybe the most anticipated book. Um, there are a number of books that released this week that were highly anticipated upon announcement but didn't end up really delivering the type of buzz. Uh, there are some books that didn't even make this list that when I was putting it together and looking at all the releases, I was kind of surprised like people aren't talking about this because we expected to see more. And I don't know if it's a vacuum of attention on King and black or whether or not it was the, you know, the heat behind the daredevil issue or all of the other things going on in the comic market, but justice league endless winter and the kickoff of this endless winter event, which is supposed to be, you know, this big winter DC event that we, you know, there was all this advertising for, but really nobody knows a lot about yet. And uh, kind of started off with a whimper. It really wasn't much talk. I haven't gotten a chance to read the issue. Um, so I'm still hopeful that the content will deliver, which can get that secondary reader buzz going. But, you know, it, DC was really victim to this this week as they had two major number ones drop this week, which should have been huge releases that really were kind of um, it, kind of off to a false start. Yeah, I remember when this solicit came out, it seemed like such a big, grandiose thing. And even when we talked about it last call, we were just kind of like, meh. But we're still interested in reading it. But now that it's here at release day, there's not much buzz behind it at all. And it's weird because last oh, week we yeah. talked about DC a lot. Right. And, and it's it's another reason why maybe, I don't know, this could be a sneaky first appearance because it could be flying under the radar for people um, so in, in orders. But who knows? Let us know in the comment section what you guys think. Right. Next one, we got the union number one, which is Jack's favorite. We got a first appearance of a new team. Yes, yes. The union, the team. Um, you know, it, it, I even love the accidental play on words there with union Jack. But uh, of course, it's, this kind of plays on a couple things that Brian and I um, collectively and separately uh, have moaned and groaned about. You got a team first appearance, uh, the continuing push of this um, kind of like British sect of the marvel universe that we'll see if it takes off i'm hopeful um but it, it, it you know i was against it i didn't think it was gonna really have legs it seems like something that's been done before uh but you guys really took offense to that and, and defended a lot of these characters and stories so hey i'm all for it um but I think the key for this book, having some like a little maybe secret to success, if you can call it a success, because it is a big Marvel number one um, that isn't necessarily garnering a ton of attention is that it is a King in Black tie-in. So it does have that kind of going for it as a little extra incentive for those thinking about picking up the issue today. Right, and the last one for the first appearance as we get back over to DC Comics again. This was a big issue. I had a bunch of store exclusives for it, including our friends of the channel, 616 Comics. Got that awesome Jim Lee variant. But we got Batman Catwoman number one. Yeah, and this was, you know, the other book that I referenced that really kind of came in on a whimper. Um, and it has so much going for it because it's 
you can call it Batman Catwoman. We can kind of call it whatever we want you can say it's a dc black label book but the reality of the situation is this is the batman story that we were supposed to be getting from 85 to 100 from tom king um and we're now getting it in this book so i look at this and go this is going to be a story that's not going to be minor in weight of a a a, a spin-off series this is probably going to have so, uh, some solid story elements because this was supposed to be kind of like the end of his batman run um that he never got to kind of finish having said that uh there's really no heat on this book at all there's nobody really talking about this book um it's unfortunate uh you know in we didn't see it, you know, we talked about you talked about 616 comics uh doing the partnership with bird city comics and doing the the uh, um, Jim Lee variant uh, with Scott Williams, um, but there wasn't a million stores doing uh, exclusives for this book. So I, I think um, kind of I I don't know whether it's it's you and I were fans of Tom King's Batman run, but there were a lot of people that didn't like it and didn't like it to the point that I think that they may not you know jump on this one. Um, on top of which, uh, there's already so many people so invested in what Tynan's doing right now on Batman. Um, it's, it may have been a tough sell, but it just, it, it's interesting. I would have thought by the time this book released that there would be people really on board. Hopefully again, just like we said, reader buzz will pick up and people will get into it, but I haven't got a chance to check this one out. I'm hopeful. Um, certainly there were some low points in, in Tom King's run. Uh, hopefully this is like the action ending that we were all kind of hoping for. Yeah. I mean, like you said, I enjoyed Tom King's run. There was parts of it I didn't like, but I also feel like it was sandwiched in between Scott, sandwiched in between Scott Snyder and James Tynan, who we're going to talk about in just a minute with those Reader Buzz books. And just like I just mentioned, we get into the Reader Buzz, we get Batman number 104. Yeah, so again, continuing with James Tynan, uh, Batman has been a solid reader buzz book and it hasn't mattered. I, I was really curious to see what was going to happen after Joker War, right? Because, you know, leaning in on the Joker storyline um, and the Joker's kind of element within it, um, it, it's easy to sell a Joker story. It's really easy to get reader buzz with a Joker story. It's a lot tougher to then continue that James Tynan has done that. Um, I think I kind of got even more excited for James Tynan's run to kind of pump another YouTube channel. Um, Ross Ritchie, the CEO of uh, Boom Studios, we've, we had him on the channel. He's got a great interview channel, uh, interview series on his channel. Uh, he's got James Tynan now, he's got Karen Gillian. Uh, but the, the James Tynan one where he's talking about the kind of creation of his, you know, punchline and his Batman run, um, you really kind of get the idea of where he he's trying to go, what he wants to do um, and how hampered he was in, with the kind of like the first arc of this. And it made me really excited to see where he's going to kind of take everything uh, from here. So Batman, I think, is going to be plug and play for quite, quite some time, which is why we just mentioned, I think, Batman and Catwoman. It's tough, especially coming out on the same day. I don't know if that was maybe a strategy I would have done. Um, but it, 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 I, or maybe I think they were trying to hope for the piggyback purchase where somebody comes in, grabs that Batman 104 and says, well, you know, screw it. I'll try Batman and Catwoman number one, but I don't know. Uh, another, another thing is it's, it's tough. It's easy with just that Batman name on the title. Batman Superman doesn't sell, you know, it, when you got those two, two names that doesn't always equate the same way. Yeah, and it's hard. I mean, you're in that time of year where people are kind of putting put pennies together to get Christmas right gifts point. to buy, and people want to stick to what they know and what they're used to, which gets us into that next one on the reader buzz. We got Thor issue number 10. People know what they're getting with that book right now, and they're definitely picking that up over, say, like the Batman Catwoman, the Union, and the Justice League Gimless winner. But Thor number 10 came out, and people are still buzzing about it. Yeah, and even though it wasn't like some big first appearance event type issue, you're right. I think that's a large thing there is is – people know what they're getting at this point with Thor and they know what they're getting with Donnie Cates. Big day for Donnie Cates having obviously King and Black and then, and then this Thor issue. But, um, you know, you mentioned a lot of books that they're, they're fringer titles. And, and I, it's easy to go in and say, you know, I know if I grab Batman, I know if I grab Thor, um, I know what I'm getting with those. So I think that was a lot of the logic of why those were some of the most solid books uh, this week, other than, of course, our big sleeper of the week. 
Yeah, I mean, another thing is, is all the first appearances, we got number one issues, right? So you probably walked into your LCS and they probably had end caps just full of all these issues. Great and point. If you, and if you're getting towards this time of year, like I said, and you're like, oh, what am I going to buy? You usually think, well, they got plenty of them. You know, I can come back and pick that up another day. But right now I'm getting these copies. But um, then that leads us into kind of that mystery of news broke over the past night, two nights in Daredevil number 25. Yeah, I tell you, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of like talk out loud here is I've been thinking about adding another segment to this show where we kind of talk about the book of the week, because we say a lot of times the book of the week isn't the long term play. Um, and the reason why this book isn't the long term play, just to put the lead out there right now is I honestly don't know that it can sustain the pricing that it's going for right now because it's a storyline based first appearance they would have you'd have to take it to multimedia um for it to be uh something that would be able to be investable beyond where it's at right now um it's great if you can pick it up for cover price and flip if you've already been reading it it's cool if you're a longtime daredevil fan it's cool um we're gonna let you know there's some some minor spoilers here even though they're all over the internet but in the issue of course we we talked about this that there was actually some negative talk going up into this issue about oh man i don't want to see another uh daredevil in uh jail issue i'm not gonna call out what youtube channel i saw doing uh pre foc show and bury this issue but there was one channel that i saw do that and without and i kind of agreed with their logic so i'm not even hating uh but when within that brian and i had that conversation because we're both fans as you mentioned early on of this run we both brian got me on this one um and zadarsky's doing a hell of a job with it so i i read this this series regardless um but it definitely, if you, we would have known that Electra was going to take the mantle of Daredevil in this issue, I think certainly this would have been one I would have been looking for to try to stock up on. Um, and it's no, it's kind of a no brainer that this is a hit. And uh, shout out to Gary Nusser, uh, the comic dis- despective uh, on YouTube, who uh, pointed out that actually before the issue had even dropped, that David Mack had put out an image that probably is like a variant cover or a future cover um, that kind of like led the breadcrumbs down that this was going to happen. This issue started to heat up before release. It's been the hottest book of the day. And it's always funny. To, it, you saw it in the shops today. Um, you had those people coming in who never buy Daredevil, right? And they're walking in. You got Daredevil and they're trying to buy multiple copies of Daredevil and, uh, um, you know, that that's always going to happen in situations like this. And this is why when something good happens in a run like this, it can spike to the prices that you're seeing because it's, it's a true reader buzz series. It's, it's only being ordered for pull list customers, a few for the shelf. You're not seeing stores like you mentioned, Brian, with that end cap of daredevil 25, but I, I and I don't want to be negative and I'm, I, I'm maybe going on a limb, but I kind of feel like you'll agree with me. We haven't talked about this yet today. Um, but I, you know, seeing the prices going for like $20, $25, I would say that that's reasonable for a book, for an appearance like this, but I can't see it being a $50 first appearance or anything like that. Uh, could be wrong, but it, 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 to me, it seems like everybody's going too fast, too quick. It'll, but what will be interesting is what will the late printings for this one be? Cause there's a great chance for some great covers. Yeah, I'd be anxious to see, especially as the weekend pans out, as people get their copies and start putting them up there on eBay and um, undercutters come in. Um, You're already seeing some of that yeah. right now. So it, nothing surprises me anymore with the way the prices go with some of these right. issues. I just know what I'm willing to pay and willing to not pay. But yeah, if you walked in and you saw Daredevil on the shelf today, people were picking up. It was like their little elf on the shelf Christmas miracle mm-hmm. for the week. But Next one we want to talk about in the Reader Buzz. This is a book we've talked about AWA Upshot for a while now. They've been putting out consistently great stories. They have great creative teams. But we got Erratic number one that came out this week. And then again, friends of the channel, D616 Comics, they had the only exclusive rant that I'm aware of. And that was by a fantastic cover, two cover set by John Boy Myers. Yeah, this is a book I'm rooting for um, because I love creator-owned superhero stories. Yeah. It's so hard to do because we're so familiar with the superhero trope, but there are so many places that you honestly know, like Disney's not going to go. AT&T's not going to go. Those are big corporations. And that allows kind of 
a, some open space, I feel like, for creators to work on that like superhero genre. And I want to see more of that. I think we're seeing some of that with the boys where you kind of get some themes in the boys you wouldn't get anywhere else. Um, so I'm excited for Erratic. I've heard some negative talk about it where they say kind of like the premise of the series has been done before that like limited time hero thing. And like, yeah, I mean, certainly we saw that with, you know, um, like project power and things like that have used similar premises. Um, but I, I'm excited for it because it, this book looks like it checks a lot of dots. It has a great creative team um, of like up and comers. Like Carrie Andrews, not certainly not up and comer. He's been around as an artist. So people are familiar with his cover art, but as like a writer and a creator, um, this is like a cool different role to see him in um, for the in, in like really headlining this book and then Brian Reber doing the art he's one of my like favorite cover color art colorist color artist um, seeing him kind of step up do all the art here this be his creator own book um, I'm excited for this one I hope it takes off um, but AWA Upshot they've certainly got an people's attention uh that we've talked about this before my question will be can they maintain it um but certainly we've said that this is a company that's looking to pitch these ideas to hollywood this would certainly be a great theme for a movie because we've already seen it sort of work out to a degree um but i think that this has a whole new spin a whole new element and i really love the look of this book which i think makes a, a really big difference yeah, they definitely seem, I mean, it's cliche to say, but they seem to be the flavor of the week as far as indie publishers go. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen it before with Black Mask. We've seen it with Action Lab. We've seen it even with Aftershock. And all those publishers continue to put out great stories and great series. It's just at the time, the attention is seems to be on AWA Upshot. And for good good reason. I mean, like we said, good creative teams. And I love that Diodato Jr. cover that they have for that cover B on this as right, well. Right, yeah. Superstar artists, writers, and then even the executives like Axel Alonso. It just kind of makes a difference. Right. Last one on Reader Buzz. This is one we kind of touched on this week also in the Three Up, Three Down. We were talking about Noel being hot, but we get that Marvel Tales Noel number one. Yeah, interesting week this week. If you're a um, kind of a Donny Cates Venom guy, uh, there were some books you had to pick up this week that, you know, with King and Black, with uh, Thor 10, and then this one. Um, and we've talked about this before. We talked about this on Three Up, Three Down that, uh, you know, that this is an interesting release because a lot of these Marvel Tales books have not had um, really significant reprints within them. Here, you're actually getting um, reprinted Null's first appearance. Uh, so I think that there could become a market one day. Uh, I, I can't remember what printing they're up to on Null's first appearance. I think it's like five. This could be looked at as like a sixth, you know, the next one, whatever it is. If it's six, it's the seventh. If it's seven, it's the eighth, whatever it is. Um, but it, this could be looked at as just the next one. And then again, have that 150 virgin variant. We talked about that. that even for dealers, the buying cost is like $200 just to get one of those. Um, and this is going to get overlooked, I think, in, in a week where you're getting King and Black, which is certainly a book that I think a lot of stores will order it heavy. Uh, that's a big bill. Um, and then on top of it being a Batman week, a book that they order heavy, a Thor week, a book that they order heavy, a new number one, um, as well as all of these other books that we've been talking about. Um, you know, this, this is a, a one that could be kind of overlooked to an extent. So that wraps up our reader buzz section again a week out and we got the variant buzz. It's a very short variant buzz section this week, but we're going over to Marvel and we get that Miles Morales number 21 incentive. Yeah, and you don't see a lot of one in tens these days from Marvel. Usually um, it's like a, a game game incentive or a movie yeah. incentive or a photo incentive. Right, it's something you really don't want. Yeah. Um, so this was interesting. Nice cover art. Um, I, I think it just caught people off guard. So yeah, this, this was one that was selling out at most uh, large online retailers. Um, I, I, like I said, I think it caught people off guard on a week where there's a lot of other uh, big releases, a lot of other shiny objects, as you would say. Um, and, and this one uh, just kind of 
uh, I think slipped past people. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see this one be a book that kind of continues to rise in value because I think we're going to be talking about Miles for quite some time. Um, and certainly my Miles variants um, have commanded uh, kind of increased attention and risen in value o- over time as the buyers who are buying Miles more than a lot of other characters are collecting and keeping that character. And I think that that makes a real difference. So I, I kind of feel more bullish about Miles than 99% of the characters out there on the market. Yeah, it also goes to tell, I mean, eventually once you start seeing more Spider-Verse 2 footage and and right. and trailers and people are getting all those other Miles books, it seems like people start, not, I won't say reaching, that's not the right word, but they start finding books that are similar, that are still obtainable, and who knows, this might be one, and next thing you know, you're going to see it on Instagram and the value start going up as well, but that's it for the variant buzz, but we always have at the end of the show, Jack's long-term play. And of course, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is the book we haven't talked about yet on the show, but it was the big release of the week, especially from Marvel. And we get that King in Black number one. We also talk about here, Jack's mentioned it a lot of times. I'm sure he's going to talk about the other covers. He's had a bunch of covers for it. But we talk about the importance of cover A, and I myself, just like Jack, enjoy picking up that regular cover. It also goes into kind of like trading cards, right? Everyone's after the refractors and the mojos and all these other one in tens, one in ones, one in 99s. But there's something to be said about that base rookie card. So there's also something to be said about that number one issue cover A, King and Black number one. Why is it your long term play? Well, I'll tell you a few reasons, but you actually made a great point there about the base rookie cards with sports cards, because I think we may even see some of that trend come into our hobby as sports cards tend to be a little bit ahead of us on the timeline. And you've seen that 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 trend from some of those like the inserts of our day in the 90s to the to the to the autographed inserts now to the base cards getting a lot of that focus and attention and we can end up seeing that in our hobby that's more of an aside but it's something that i kind of pay attention to and it's one of the reasons why we we tend to kind of like pay attention and gravitate to these cover a's also they're great long-term value oftentimes because they're the ones that are going to get left on the shelf they're the ones that are in the most abundance all of the reasons that people are going to be negative about the current stock of cover a of king and black is all the, the reasons why i like it um, I think it's the one that if you go on eBay right now and you look at like lots, there are a lot of dealers that are ordering and, and they, what they do is they over order. They order way more of these books than they can handle. And they do it to get those incentives. They flip the incentives and they dump the books on the market. You can go right now on eBay and see 10 count lots, 20 count lots, 50 count lots of King and Black at retailer prices, the type of prices that only they should have access to. Um, so I really like this book, even with all of that. And the reason why is because we've been talking about this on the channel more and more. A lot of times I have four and five major points and I can sell you on Venom and his long-term value, but I think you, you're you already there. Um, I, I can sell you on Downey Cates, but my guess is whoever you are watching this, you're probably already there. So I think the thing that I want to really make a point, and it's something that Brian and I have talked about privately and we've talked about kind of in different um shows is prestige books when you think about a wall when you think about the walls at your local convention there's different types of books that get featured on those walls obviously first appearances key number ones um and then beyond that it starts to get like variants and with your more modern dealers and like what is kind of that next thing well prestige comics what's a prestige comic well it's like a key a key reader buzz book, a demon in the bottle, Iron Man, or a oh, the one that Brian and I always like to reference, Killing Joke. Killing Joke isn't a first appearance. It's not. Um, it's not anything that like you can really quantify easily in a key collector app. But at the same point, it is still a key nonetheless, which is why I'm sure it's featured within that app. Um, but it's it's a key. Uh, because of what it was as a release, the importance it was on the hobby, what it meant, it's almost like a, a moment in time. And if you were around, and I know Brian has an incredibly personal story that he shared on the channel before about buying that book and what it meant to him. And, and people think about that. I think that for a current generation, um, King and Black, a book that is a, the largest, most highly anticipated book of 2020 um, from the biggest writer, the number one publisher, the most popular character, whether or not that makes sense to old school people or not, 
Um, Venom is the most popular character right now. Uh, and it, it, I look at this book and I think that this is probably some kids killing joke. And in the same way, um, I think Absolute Carnage, which has already, if you look, has already started to tick up a little bit. Um, and it, it's slight. But when you're talking about a book with the type of print run, um, you know, it takes time. Seeing that tick up slide has only really made my kind of like feelings about books like this even stronger. Um, and I think that the problem why this isn't for everybody is you got to have really long term patience. How long was Secret Wars number one in five dollar boxes? If you really think about it, that was in five dollar boxes until about what a year and a half ago. Yeah. Empire yeah. will be in five dollar boxes till eternity. To, it'll be in dollar boxes probably <laughs> but but it is exactly the point is 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 you have so many releases like empire war of realms endless winter a lot of big events and they don't command that same attention that king Black has on the market right now. um think about how much we've talked about no on three up three down you can't even imagine how much i go out of my way to avoid talking about no because honestly no's hot every week um and and it's just I think that this is a character that this younger generation, uh, he is going to be a big bad for this young generation. And this is kind of Noel's quintessential story. This is Donnie Cates's, you know, quintessential story. And as big as absolute carnage felt, certainly in reading the first issue of King and Black, um, you kind of quickly realize like even that all only led to this. Um, so, and part of that is Donny Cates' writing style. Part of it is the gravitas he puts in every situation, which sucks you in as a reader. And it can be difficult as an investor because you feel every issue is going to be that one. But that's why this one, I don't need some crazy event. Um, certainly the event of the last panel of that book, if it ends up going the way it looks, uh, the next issue would be the death issue, not this issue, but still that's not the reason why I think this is important to me. Again, I think this is going to be a moment in time book. This will be a book. A lot of people will pass up putting in their collection because they think it'll be there forever. And then 20 years from now, I think somebody's going to see this on a wall for 40 bucks and think, man, I should have bought that way back when, but I'm going to grab it now. Um, and it's, it's, this is the perfect book to go pick up now and just grab a few copies, stick them in a, in, in a uh, short box, a long box and i don't think you're gonna ever regret uh picking up a book like certainly quality kind of this importance yeah i agree i think it's great i think it's a great story i think it's a great issue and i don't discount the cover raise and in, in the least everyone wants those variants but sometimes those variants kind of out of people's price range especially with today's youth we always talk about comics that are so expensive and uh, how do you get kids in the hobby outside of comic book day halloween fest when they're paying four dollars an issue or or above that it's a great entry point it's a great book i mean if you look at it today Donny Cates today might be our our Claremont before or our Simonson right. or Byrne or you know any of those people. It's just Donny Cates is definitely leaving his legacy, and this seems to be each one of his events books gets bigger and bigger. But another great one on the long term play. But there it is, guys. There's our Bolo show for this week. That's right. Be on the lookout. Let us know what books you guys picked up. Let us know what stories you guys enjoyed reading. Let us know if this Daredevil twenty five was the first as you picked up or if you've been reading it, because we keep telling you, such a great series. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.